David, thank you so much for joining us. We are following up on this data quality roundtable conversation, then we dove down inside the data inside TaxonWorks CMS. And now we're gonna take another uh, tangent and this notion of um, when data gets out and we want to say there's an issue with the data, how, are there different or more effective ways that data could get back to us that give us more agency? And David's going to talk about one idea for that. Thanks, Deb. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, Deb invited me a little while ago, and I think this is a perhaps a far more grandiose title than what what I may have expected. But I've I've repeated it here for you all of you to see what it is that I intend to talk about. So, balancing global agency and local precision, round tripping your feedback. Um, so I, I'm thinking about feedback generally and how, why, what kinds of questions would we wish to ask ourselves, given there might be an opportunity to receive feedback from others when we share our data out into the world. And these are the kinds of questions that occur to me. You probably have other questions of your own. Where, what's the feedback about? You know, clearly you need some kind of context. Who's providing that feedback? Where did that feedback originated? From so, in other words, if you if you shared your data out to GBIF or IDIG Bio or elsewhere or through other kinds of data objects that you share out to other kinds of aggregators, you'd like to know that some kind of feedback was accrued in those systems. And so, if you receive feedback from those aggregators, you'd like to know well, this feedback came from GBIF, came from IDIG Bio. Might give you a sense of whether or not um, uh, those particular aggregators are um engendering a community of users um more so than others and so something to concentrate on perhaps um how does the commentator the one who individual you know the individual who submits some kind of feedback how do they track whether or not their feedback has received has been received or has been taken action on oftentimes we it seems like a bit of like a, a bit a bit of a black box <laughs> when you submit some kind of feedback on an aggregator, and then you receive nothing to know whether or not your feedback has received. Um, as a collection manager, for example, um, how might you tell your administrators that there's this massive amount of feedback that's coming in from end users, perhaps that might feature into your performance metrics in terms of the kinds of things that you need to be responsive to? How many of them do you receive for the course of a year? Um, so this is a, a bit comparable to how you might track citations for your data, but clearly there might also be a need to track the number of and instances of feedback you've received from the public, just as you would say visitations as well. Um, and how do I redirect some feedback that I might receive to someone who I know might be able to answer it, who might be better suited to answer that than, than you could? Um, so all these kinds of questions kind of come to mind for me, and I don't really have many answers for them. I have a potential solution that I might propose to see whether or not it might be useful for you, but we shall see. So also some general observations. So aggregators like GBIF or iDigBio, for example, um, do have on occasion the ability for an end user to submit feedback. And I'll, and I'll demonstrate some of that if you're not familiar with what that looks like on GBIF. Um, but the data publishers themselves, themselves who share their data out to aggregators struggle to illustrate some sustained impact of the data that they publish. So you know, when those feedback mechanisms might exist or not, how do you demonstrate to others that there's an, your data have made an impact in the world based on the number of instances of feedback that may or may not have come back to you? Um, and then as we heard earlier, data publishers struggle to prioritize improvements to data quality. I use the bad word, <laughs> data quality. Let's call it something else. Uh, struggle to prioritize how we improve the particular elements of our data um, in response to kind of feedback that might, we might receive, whether that be at scale or individually. So some modern solutions. We heard uh, Marco say this a little earlier and that resonated with a number of folks. Some potential modern solutions that perhaps require some infrastructure 
So we could imagine a world where annotations are being made on particular data elements, and there are some commercial applications that make use of the web annotation data model like Hypothesis. Uh, Disco uh, in the EU is investigating the use of uh, web annotation data models for comments that might be made on uh, specimen-based data. We shall see how well that progresses. Um, some other kinds of modern solutions that are in academia in particular are things that are relatively new on the scene called nano publications. Uh, so little snippets of statements that might have um, uh, underpinnings and might have some kind of utility for, uh, for use in academia. So Pensoft is making use of this through uh, on a, so a software company called Knowledge Pixels. Um, but what if we step back a little bit and say, well, what if we attempt to use the vehicle that many of us are familiar with in the exchange of data and Darwin Core itself? Could we imagine some kind of mechanism that might be a Darwin Core term itself that could help shepherd some of the feedback that could reside or be accumulated in some of the aggregators and fed back directly to the data publishers themselves, regardless of where those records may wind up. So as we know, some of our data will wind up in GBIF, I dig bio, elsewhere. Wouldn't it be lovely then if each of those aggregators need not be overly concerned about how to send feedback back to the data publishers? What if we had an actual Darwin core term that was the part of the vehicle for that exchange of comments. So this is something I proposed ooh, five years ago. <laughs> so it's it's either bad cheese or good wine <laughs> at this stage. So this is the new proposal. Um, feedback URL, just on a whim, I submitted this to Tadwig's Darwin Core GitHub repository. Um, and I received some modest feedback, if you will, from others who thought this perhaps might be an interesting idea. There's the URL at the bottom, slash 180. So you can read about this. Um, so this is where I think it might potentially reside as a record level Darwin core term called feedback URL. And so I'll walk you through what happens at, at present on GBIF. So for example, here is a Illinois Natural History Survey record shared to GBIF. And you notice the top right-hand side, there is a little speech bubble that you can click and up comes a number of options for you as a, someone who has landed on this page. And one of which is content. So you click content and there you can send an email to Tommy McElrath. That's the state of play at GBIF at the moment. And where that comes from is in the EML metadata from that Darwin Core archive that the Illinois Natural History Survey insect collection has shared out to GBIF. And so at, at that data set level metadata includes a block of XML called contact. And that gets bubbled down to each one of the occurrence records as they get shared on GBIF. And there is Tommy McElrath's contact information that then becomes available on those occurrence pages. Here's another, so you can also, you know, tell GBIF as if you know, if you don't want to answer, if you don't want to talk to Tommy McElrath directly, there's another option there you can tell GBIF. And when you do that, your issue goes into GitHub directly, uh, automatically. And as you can see, there are several thousand issues on GitHub that GBIF tries to coordinate the communications about these feedback. 90% uh, of which are all taxonomic based. Um, now, Platzi and others have reached out to GBIF and say, hey, this is kind of cool. Can we have our own GitHub repository for accepting and accruing comments to kind of uh, eliminate or reduce the kind of the impact on GBIF itself to kind of shepherd through these comments? And so if you land on a Platzi, page on GBIF for a particular taxon from the material citations that they have, you click that same speech bubble and instead of contacting Tom, Tommy McElrath or sending a GitHub request and comment into GitHub itself that GBIF manages, you click Platzi. And that creates an issue on GitHub that's structured that shows where the comment has come from, 
And what is it in reference to? Um, and Platzi can manage their own feedback mechanism that way. And that's what that URL looks like, that when it goes out into GBIF, and this is out into Platzi that GBIF manages. So there's a, a URL parameter called body, and then a blah of text that gets then dumped immediately into a new issue. So wouldn't it be lovely if we could all do that, uh, such that feedback could potentially go into our own GitHub repository or other mechanisms if we already have ways in which we gather feedback. So thinking about this in the library community, there was something comparable many decades ago that was developed called Open URL. Uh, and this was developed in the early 90s, I think, from a, uh, a, a Flemish uh, librarian, and his name was Herbert Vandensampel, who was also behind the OAI PMH metadata exchange standard. So this is something he called open URL that was widely used before DOIs became the fashion. And you'll notice the bunch of structured parameters in there and some values. So it's comparable, what I'm proposing in feedback URL to what open URL was, but far less rigid that there's no standard behind this. It's really dependent on what the data publisher wishes to put in that feedback URL to pre-populate some commenting that might, uh, you have expectations that you'd wish to receive. So, um, the implementation for this, well, it's really up to the data publisher. Um, there's no prescribed structure of what those parameters might be or the URL itself. Um, and we see signs of this kind of thing happening already in Symbiota and Taxon Works, perhaps. Uh, Arctos, for sure, will have the ability to accept comments from the public. Um, it'd be nice then if that potentially that same URL um, could be shared out into Darwin Core by that new proposed term. The alternatives to implementing this at the actual Darwin Core record level um, could be uh, at the data set metadata level. But then the problem with that is that it's up to the aggregator then to bubble down the actual content of those URL parameters into the individual occurrence record. And so it's a bit challenging um, to do that and to have a bit of control over the content of that URL to pre-populate some feedback uh, if that were left up to the aggregator. So some kind of check marks about the implementation of this. Um, sure, you could record what the feedback is about. I'd leave that up to the commenter, pre-populate it with some content in there as part of the body or parameter, for example, if that were going off to, to GitHub. Um, clearly, you could demonstrate who's providing the feedback through that, through the mechanisms that are already built in through GitHub. Um, some challenge there is if that were an actual Darwin core term with pre-populated parameters in there to populate the comment itself and that feedback, we may not necessarily have the fidelity, if you will, of actually being able to illustrate where the feedback has originated from. That's the nice thing about the aggregator taking con full control over this and what parameters they wish to put in there. Not necessarily easy, if at all possible, for the data publisher to do that. So that's one challenge with this. Um, the commenter clearly can track the status of their feedback. If that were, say, for example, sent off to GitHub, um, you could easily redirect the comment off to somebody who might be able to respond to it if everyone at the organization was using GitHub, for example, uh, because you could tag someone else and say, hey, I don't know how to answer this, so-and-so, maybe you could respond to this. Um, authentication is another challenge. Clearly, you'd need some mechanism for that comment to actually uh, be submitted, uh, perhaps in, in a secure fashion. Um, GitHub is nice because many of us have GitHub accounts. But if that comment were to go back as feedback to your own in-house system for gathering feedback, well, then you might be met with the, the need to authenticate, to actually submit your feedback. So there's some challenges there to kind of work out some best practices of how best to kind of implement this. So some next steps. My proposal on Tadwig stalled. Um, and what I need to do is elevate this back and revive it. 
And it was suggested that minimally, I'd need to demonstrate utility for this. So that there's a, an actual demand for this. And so in the chat, if you wouldn't mind, if you want to let me know whether or not this would be useful for you and your organization and the way in which you publish data. Uh, and then I will try and gather all your plus ones in the chat and illustrate that as a potential need. Uh, so I can take this, this proposal one step further and push it along and actually make a well-structured um, GitHub issue for Tadwig uh, to, for this potential term to be accepted and then ratified. Um, so that's it. Very plain and simple. Hopefully I can turn this uh, old wine into something <laughs> palatable and some tasty cheese. Um, and I, uh, I thank you very much for the, uh, your time and interest in this. Thanks very much, David. Excellent summary of where things are out there. We have a couple, a little bit of time for quick questions. If you have one for David. Ah, David is clapping his hands. I, I have a question. David, could you just clarify briefly? I, I want to make sure we all followed the difference between a feedback URL that would be applied at the level of an individual record when somebody's looking at, for example, IDIG bio or GBIF but a, versus this data set you mentioned where somebody would be making a comment, but it would go to the level of the entire data set. Well, I think there's an opportunity for both of those kinds of scenarios. Um, but what occurred to me originally when proposing this term is that you know, when uh, collection managers that share their data out to the world via whatever tool that they use and their um, records tend to scatter like leaves and some of those records might appear on GBIF, some on IDIG bio, and then end users download those records. And so the end users who might be downloading those records um, lose sight of where those individual records come from. And they might appear in some kind of analysis later or even some third party website that might show those records. Mm -hmm. And there's no mechanism directly to kind of comment about that individual record back to the originator of those data themselves. And so having it at the level of the individual term in Darwin Core would kind of um, facilitate that loop, uh -huh. if you will, a bit more effectively than if it were at the metadata level for the data itself, because that would obligate the, the aggregator to do the clever things that, for example, like GBIF has done and taken on board uh, to kind of bubble who to contact or how to construct that URL into yeah. each of the occurrence records below the metadata itself. Ooh. So what I'm proposing here is an actual Darwin core term, uh, as opposed to something that might reside within the EML metadata for which there is presently no home, this kind of idea that would then have to be proposed to the ecological metadata language group as something that they might, might take on board and then GBIF also to adopt. Uh -huh. Thank you for that, that helped. So I guess that to my question to the Taxon Works community is, would this be something that you could implement in your publishing of data uh, out to GBIF? So, so David, let me give you a, can you guys hear me? Okay, am I, sorry. I'm sharing the screen right now. Yep. Um, here's what happened just before six months ago, before Taxon Works Together, when iNaturalist um, got in touch with us, we did a rapid flurry that's somewhat related um, so it turns out iNaturalist, very briefly, was scraping the Orthoptera, the species file sites, just they had a manual bot, they call it a taxonomic framework, and they were scraping Orthoptera species file for names. We announced that the species files were moving into taxon pages and that there was all sorts of new metadata that could be discovered in JSON format, etc. So Scott reached out and said, hey, am I still going to be able to scrape this or can we make it easier? And we did, long story short, we did make it easier. You can go right to the API and download whole files rather than having to crawl it. So one of the things that we discovered 
is that iNaturalist doesn't want to manage nomenclature. That's a lot of work. They want to fix the problem when somebody on on um, here, you know, on iNaturalist says sees that something is wrong on the internet. iNaturalist doesn't want to be in the business of fixing what that nomenclature. They want to take it back to the source of the framework that they've scraped, and they've scraped many frameworks, just like GBIF is aggregating data. So what we did in a couple of quick iterations is that we introduced in our endpoint where they come to discover what data is available, we introduced the data curation issue tracker URL. And this is a project specific piece of metadata that lists simply a GitHub issue tracking um, um, URL. And what instantly happened was wonderful. I was trying to find an exact answer is that when we publish these taxon pages in their new framework and their new homes, um, we convinced them to add issue trackers, just like in, you saw in David in your examples, um, that people could open. And what happens is you can come and click from here and you can add an issue off of this site. But somewhere in iNaturalist, they have the same links that will take you to this framework. And instantly we saw the very active communities in iNaturalist come and add issue trackers, issues on this repo, and then the curators can start acting on them. So it's been a wonderful example, somewhat simpler in nature, but you know, exemplary of a lot of those principles of exactly what I think we're talking about as a practical use. So um, just making this field in a project and putting this you know, here, this is really your Darwin core field at the aggregator level. Could we be more specific for rows of data or other things? Sure, right? Could we have little metadata templates in our issue tracker? Sure, that would all help us more, uh, you know, we can hit and, and gather data automatically off these issues if they followed a bit of format and throw that back into TaxonWorks, et cetera. But just that simple round trip and creating a link in one place and iNaturalist has another link somewhere here that takes us back to that issue tracker has immediately paid off. So that, that's where we, we were discovering things. I would, I would add oh. part of that payoff has been the user happiness, doer happiness, this notion of I actually found something that was wrong. I have expertise to say so. Um, iNat goes, oh, great, we don't have to hear this thing we can't do anything about anymore, right? People were complaining to iNat, and iNat's like, we can't fix that. Right, so we've, we've made this connection so that it can be, go, go put your stuff here where it can actually do some good and people are happy to see it. And so then it gets fixed and then it appears correctly in, in INAT. So there's this, and this I want to say that, technical aspect. Yeah, follow up with one more observation. What this kind of thing does is also inherently draw attention to the use and the need for these resources. Now the orthoptera species file or your, you can imagine your insect collection your digital data can come to administrators and say, look, here we are both recording um, and expanding our community. Some of these people were never participating. Sean, for example, jumps in. We've now expanded the community of users. We've demonstrated need by the number of issues that are open. And just because they're closed, you know, demonstrating we have 2000 open issues is still a good thing. And we're very transparent about our problems as well. We're just throwing our laundry out there. So we see this as a way of being able to take this to administrators and document use and document importance in and and you know not only at the publishing level but at the at the citizen scientist level at the um, you know use at the I don't want to you know un I don't want to categorize that but you know at the use of a large large number of different um, people coming from different uh, backgrounds let's call it so that's that's what we've discovered and I think at minimum we would love to put a Darwin core term on this, right? Just as you proposed. Yeah. Very cool. Um, okay, did we have other hands up? Sorry, I lost Fritz's track. Fritz's hand overall. was up. We are at time and I, yeah. I don't, he took it down, I think. But Fritz, do you, are you still here? Do you have? Oh, oh, oh yeah, he, I just want to like make a quick question about like, the, the proposal of the URL link, like I imagine that they were saying about, well, what if like we have like many sources? It, it doesn't need to be like a maybe a more complex feeling the way that okay, we have like GitHub issues maybe from 
that are directly publishing GitHub, but maybe another uh, system is using also like this GitHub uh, issues and they have like different URLs. So maybe you'll have many things to, to catch in that same field. I don't know like how that would work out or what would be the best way. Yeah, well, I think that's kind of part and parcel with this proposal is that if it were left up to the data publisher themselves to decide A, what that URL should be and B, whether or not they want to pre-populate the body of that feedback with some kind of context for themselves, when that feedback comes back to them, you could, you know, the same Darwin core terms that are available, you could populate as part of the body of the message such that you don't get some anonymous feedback come back with no context whatsoever. You've pre-populated the message, if you will, of that feedback with something there that would facilitate the communications among humans um, so that you don't get something uh, completely random without any idea what it was all about. I think the challenge would be to know where the feedback originated. Uh, I'm not yet sure how best to come up with a mechanism for that. Otherwise, you'd have to leave it up to the aggregator, for example, to also put content in that body of that message to say, ah, yes, it was on iNaturalist that this came from, or yeah, it was yeah, on exactly. where this came from. Yeah. How do we extend that to give context? It's like teaching people to use issue templates on your issue tracker for code, et cetera. Um, how do you give enough content so that it makes actionable?